We're coming in hot with inspiring guests, witty banter, and colorful commentary for today's veterans and military community. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. Welcome back to the Tango Alpha Lima Experience. I am Jeff Daly in California. And in that square over there, all the way in D.C., is Ashley Marie Gorbulja. How goes it? It goes. It goes. It, go- yeah. <laughs> it goes. As it as it goes. That's the way she. That's the way she goes. If anyone's it, a Trailer Park Boys fan out there, it's the way she goes. Oh, too bad Mark's not here to nerd out with you. Or mm-hmm. was that not one of his things? I, you know, I don't know if you ever watched that show, but I wouldn't put it past him. I feel like he could appreciate the raunchy, dry humor yeah, of but it's Trailer Canadian. Park shenanigans. Yeah, it's, it's Canadian, Canadian, isn't it? Yeah, it's like yeah. Letterkenny. It's like a version of Letterkenny, but older and a bit more dumber. <laughs> but I'm job. from Michigan. We're the last line of we're the first line of defense against Canada. So I get a little. Mm. Uh... All right. Okay. So there we go. This is our first show since uh, you recorded in the theater. Yeah, it is. Uh, Perfect. love Hollywood Post 43, Mr. Commander. It's, it's official now. It's official. Yeah. Very exciting. We had a, a really great time uh, shooting some, some just our, our content out there. And it was nice to be, you know, you were the hostess with the mostest, Jeff. Hostess mm. with the mostest. It's Pride Month. I'll allow that. Uh, so we had, we, we shot there and it was, it was cool. And if you missed it, uh, there, uh, go back one episode behind this one. And I, two episodes behind this one and then a couple more in the future right that we did the intro for we we time hop here we're high tech at tango alpha lima so stick with us catch up if you can ashley yes we are not we are not in hollywood post 43 but we still have a show to do from the comfort of our own studios you have an amazing story to start us off yes so The Air Force won the Pentagon's first ever official video game tournament, according to Task and Purpose. The military has its Battle Royale Championship. Just late last month, all six branches of the armed forces fought it out for the first ever Department of Defense Armed Forces Esports Championship. Each branch of the armed forces contributed their own team of gamers to complete over two days. The game of choice to decide which part of the military was the top gaming branch. Halo Infinite and even through mass, excuse me, even though Master Chief and the Spartan super soldiers were fighting on various alien planets or space, the winning branch wasn't the Marine Corps or the Space Force, but rather the Air Force. So the article goes on to say that, you know, the Pentagon has had this complex, a complex recent history with gaming. And on the one hand, it's criticized Gen- Generation Z for poor fitness brought on by sedentary lifestyles for playing video games. And then February, you know, 2022, a report even called the Gen Z, the Nintendo generation. On the other hand, the Pentagon said the games such as first person shooters like Halo games make can make troops more combat ready. And the Department of Defense has realized that so many service members already are gamers and is trying to capitalize on the esports market. While the ForceCon 22 event was the first official inter-service gaming tournament, the military has fielded its teams in gaming combat before. In 2020, the different branches, minus the Coast Guard, took part in a Call of Duty tournament with troops from the United Kingdom. A Halo tournament is not an, the annual, or excuse me, the Halo tournament is not the annual Army Navy College football game in terms of excitement or storied history, but the video games being immensely popular with the success of the inaugural event. It's likely we'll see the armed forces going head to head again for bragging rights. But for now, the Air Force can boast that it's won its first ever official championship between the branches. What do you think? Hey, they got to reach people somehow. Good for them on the marketing. Why not? I think it surprises zero people that the Air Force won a video game championship. Zero people are shocked by this. Um, not shocked. This is my not shocked face. I've been going through a lot lately. This is my not shocked face. Although the 
the Navy and the Marine Corps because the character, the main character is Master Chief. I mean, we got to come back. We got to come back uh, and get that and get that championship. And I, I thought it was funny in 2020, they said the Coast Guard didn't participate. Uh, I don't want to speculate, but I think that the battlefield part of it was on oceans and they and they protested that it wasn't shallow water and therefore it was an unfair advantage to the Navy. So Coast Guard, get up there in space. Uh, we need you and- uh, You need to take thing. up space. Take up space, Coast Guard. Oh, are you oh. saying they take up space? They should be taking up more space. Oh, they should me. take up more space, yes. Yeah. They're, space they're a cover. small branch, but they're mighty. Shout out oh. to all my Coasty friends out there. Coasty friends, you owe Ashley a drink. <laughs> I mean, you're never going to pay for a drink on a coasty base ever again. Um, Let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> never had that problem before, but good to know. You've, you've been at a coasty base? I mean, I've been on, I'm on a joint base right now. I mean, I've got a Coast Guard station right down the way. I mean, anytime I go, or I mean, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's okay. It's not impossible. All right, coasties, first round's on you. <laughs> uh, so now what we're going to do is we are going to transition. That's a foreshadowing to later. We're going to transition into the next part of our show. We have uh, we are going to be joined by Ian Edelson and Dean Eckenberg. They are related. Did you know that? Well, I know because. Well, we are, yeah, because we already did it. Uh, that's <laughs> we did the thing. We did the thing. There's His grandfather and grandson, and they have some really cool stuff. The floor one, floor one productions, uh, which Ian started, has works in film festivals and makes music videos, commercials, narrative films and documentaries and his grandfather uh, Dean does documentary work and they worked on one together called the Misty Experiment. And before they get here, I'll say welcome home, though it doesn't do much good because he can't hear me. But Misty Experiment is about his uh, exper experience in Vietnam. And we're going to be right back with both of them after this break. Howdy, folks. Y'all come on out. Get out of those recliners and join us for the 2022 Hundred Miles for Hope Challenge. The third American Legion Fitness Challenge will raise money again for veterans and military families in need. We've made big improvements to the 2022 Challenge. Monthly mini challenges with awesome prizes. Hey, department adjutants, department commanders, Let's get some department versus department challenges and get it going. Let's go. This year, we've made it even easier to track your miles. We've made it even easier for friends and family to support you through donations to the Veterans and Children Foundation. My goal this year is to raise $450,000 for the Veterans and Children Foundation. But we need your help. Get back support veterans and military families. Visit legion.org backslash 100 miles to register and learn more. And let's show the nation that we are Veterans, veterans Strengthening America. America. All right, Alphas, we don't just have one guest for you today. We have two. They're related, so they get along, much like Ashley and I get along, though we're not related if you can't tell. So we are, we here, we have Ian Adelson, wave for the good people out there. And we also have Dean Eckenberg. He's waving out there. And what, you are a flight surgeon. So I'm not gonna get into anything yet because I don't go first. Ashley always goes first. It's alphabetical right. around here. That's how we so, do things. Huh? What? It's alphabetical. Ashley says yes. Jeff. Yeah. That says yes. 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 So. <laughs> so very excited. Uh, you know, I'm, I like to think I'm a creative, but then like, I mean, inspiring folks with vision and can make things happen. Uh, so Ian, as I'm, I'm, I'm reading about your bio and then Dean, as I'm, I'm seeing, you know, about your time in service in the Vietnam war. Um, I'm just, 
I'm always inspired by folks and I, I love to hear the origin story. Um, I'm like a big Marvel, like super nerd when it comes to that stuff. So I want to know kind of the origin story, uh, Ian, about, you know, your, um, your journey through uh, producing, right? Uh, being a, you know, a, a director. Um, and then I'm interested in, you know, Dean, you kind of just sharing a little bit more about yourself because I have a lot of stuff about Ian, but I, I want to know more about Dean too. So I'll, I'll toss it over to Ian first for a little bit of background and inspiration. And then Dean, I, I want to know some more things about you, bud. Sure. Well, so first of all, thanks so much for having us on. Um, this is so great to be here and to be able to have a chance to speak about the film and us. And it's just been such a labor of love up to this point. But um, so a little background on me. Um, I'm from the Bay Area, grew up uh, where Dean currently lives. And I went to University of Michigan Film School. I studied uh, writing there, Go Blue. Studied Go Blue. Uh, writing there and directing. And after Michigan, I went out to New York and I started working on sets, just kind of any job I could do, just getting involved in the industry, getting a little knowledge of how it all works, just the ecosystem of set and who does what, you know, what department does what. Um, and then I guess I just worked my way up to being a, a producer on, uh, on shows. And then after I finished this, right up until the pandemic, um, I branched off and started a production company that I direct with right now. And so I currently work uh, in New York as a director. I do commercial content uh, for a company called RD and uh, I do documentaries and narrative films as well. So uh, having the opportunity to work on this was, was really great because um, the amount of research and just uh, getting more into documentary films as a whole and really starting to embrace that more and more as time goes on. Uh, this was a great uh, way for, for me to keep building on that and to work with my grandfather here. Okay, no, um, that's, well, first of all, I got to digress, Michigan. Yes. Anyway, I'm from Ohio, so I see. that's like the ongoing back and forth between- She might have fooled you because- she has all of her teeth and <laughs> stop that is not nice you're gonna offend our ohio alphas i am i literally i will walk into that room because we have so here's the fun thing uh, for everyone today like jeff and i are in the same building because i ironically was just um i was just in san francisco graduating uh out of uh, University of San Francisco. Anyway, that's not the point. That's not the point here. So, Jeff, you just oh, sometimes you make me. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Hey, we were going to go to Dean, weren't we? To introduce him. Yes. To? Yes. No. I was making the comment, and then I had a comment, and I lost the comment. But Ian, uh, I'll, I'll just things. finish with with Go Blue, and it was just it was a great football season, and you know we're really happy to. That we were able to close it out like we did. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm so happy for you. Yay, yay, yay. You, you and Jeff have so much to talk about. Um, but, but very exciting. I always love to hear, you know, folks' origin story and just kind of that, that progression of, you know, learning the ropes, I think is really important. I know too many folks who just want to like jump right into the thing, but they don't understand the thing quite yet. Um, and that you're fully embracing this like, specific niche of, of, of film. And it's, you've had, of course, this opportunity to work with your grandfather. So Dean, grandfather extraordinaire, I want to know a little bit more about you. You were a flight surgeon in the Misty Squadron and Vietnam War, but like, who is Dean outside of being a Vietnam veteran? Well, I was born in Canada, born and brought up in Canada. I went to medical school in Detroit at Wayne State. And uh, so many it, Michigan it, references. I'm, I'm, I'm zero for two. <laughs> it's two to zero right now. I'm losing. Go on. <laughs> I interned out here in San Francisco and right away went into the service and uh, spent a year in Vietnam, which I guess we'll talk about later, and then a year in Bangkok at the uh, as head of the dispensary there. When I got out of the service, I I worked emergency rooms at Detroit, again, Detroit receiving, and I had a practice here in San Francisco for many years, and then got retooled, went to Berkeley, did a PhD in uh, epidemiology. 
and was head of disease control here in San Francisco during the AIDS epidemic. And uh, following that, I started working overseas, working internationally, uh, sort of a, a disaster. Uh, I, I worked in Eastern Europe when the wall came down, Project Hope, then I worked for UNICEF, WHO, all over the world and such. And then retired and became the bum I am today. Oh. And he ended with that I became a bum. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, you hear all You're of that. You're a treasure. You're a You're treasure. A you hear all that, you call yourself a bum. What do we, what do we mortals? What, what am I? Yeah, what are we what? mortals supposed to think about ourselves? Thank you for that, Dean. Thank you for that. I've been, uh, well, I, I sort of, I made a little movie about uh, uh, going back to Vietnam. I've been back to Vietnam quite a number of times. We went back and uh, sought out some friends that I had, Vietnamese friends uh, who were near my base, a doctor, and made friends with his family. So that's one another thing that I've done and very proud of. Was that, I think, is that the same film we're getting ready to talk about? No, it's a different one. Oh, it's a different I, one. I, yeah, I made a small little film about uh, about a doctor I knew in Vietnam, a Vietnamese doctor, and my uh, return to meet him and his family, which was nothing. Did we, is, is that available for people? It is, it is, it is. That's, uh, well, you have to, it's not easily available. I should make it e more easily available. It's available. Well, well, Not fail on well on YouTube, and if you do it, <laughs> we'll have a we'll we'll get the link to Super Producer Holly, and that thing's gonna blow up. Now, before I get into my question, I, uh, this is a common practice in the American Legion. I have to say, welcome home, Dean. Um, it's, it's really important for us to say that uh, for your service in Vietnam. Speaking of your service in Vietnam, this is the main event why we're here today. Uh, you and your grandson have collaborated on a documentary. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say about it is the title. It's called The Misty Experience. Can one of you jump in or both of you? You might have a little sh a talk show shtick that you do. I, I, uh, I want to learn about this documentary that brought you to us. I'll, I'll tell you the story of how it happened. And it's the Misty Experiment. Oh, Experiment, sorry. Yeah, because it, it essentially tells the story about this fighter squadron that was put together in Vietnam that was an experiment. And that, that's why it's called the Misty Experiment. About 12 years ago or so, a friend of mine named Danny McGuire, a producer at KQED, decided he was going to make a movie about our squadron called the Misty Experiment. And he uh, started, he came up to a, uh, a reunion. We're a very close bunch. It was only 170, 150 of us during a period of three, three years. And so we're very close. We have reunions every two years and they're my best friends to this day. And uh, Danny decided he was gonna make a movie about the squadron because nobody had ever heard of it. And he thought it'd make a great story. He came to one of our reunions that was, held at Tony McPeak's place. Who, he was an Air Force Chief of Staff, one of the Misty's. And he interviewed about 30 of us. And he put, he was gonna use this as the basis for the movie. And he tried to raise money. Documentary film producers, if you know any, spend most of their time raising money to make movies. And he tried and tried and tried for about seven years, couldn't raise a buck. And then sadly he had a stroke, he just, and he lived near me, so I went down just to get the interviews. I thought that's all there was. And when I was visiting him, he said, look, I put together seven chapters on my own dime, but I can't do anything with it. I can't do a thing with it because of you know, the stroke. He says, but I'll, I'll give them to you and you can do what you want. I'll give you the, the rough cuts of these seven chapters. I showed him to my, uh, my grandson, Ian. He says, let's make a movie. Let's finish this thing. At least we'll have some souvenirs to give to the guys. And I said, fine. So over the next couple of years, Ian and I uh, shot a new beginning, a new ending, cleaned up the middle, and we had a movie. And uh, one of our guys, uh, uh, Don killed his brother. He was the guy who shot down a MiG with a F-100, by the way. Anyway, his brother uh, sent it to some PBS stations. The reaction was extraordinary. They just said, this is real. You've got to do something. This is a pro movie. So we raised a few bucks and uh, Maryland Public uh, Television became our sponsor. 
and they submitted it to uh, American Public Television. And the bottom line is, is that uh, this week or, or, or in uh, Memorial Day of, of uh, this year, it's gonna play on over uh, 85 to 90% of all PBS stations, close to 800 showing us nationally. So we ended up with a hit. So that's the story of how the movie uh, uh, came to be, right? So that's, that's the story. It was sort of Mickey and Judy, let's put on a show and it turned out to be a hit. All right, Ian, I see you unmuted. I, I, I think you wanted to jump in with, with some info here. No, I, uh, yeah, you, you pretty much covered it. I mean, it, we got a lot of this material and we just looked all through it and all through the transcripts. And there was even more footage of these interviews that weren't even in the original cut. So it was really like a, a, a deep dive into everything that Danny had put together and shot. And then, you know, we applied a structure and, uh, tidied up the middle like Dean was saying gave it a new beginning and then closed it out in a different way where we actually got to interview um, uh, two more Misties, uh, the ones who closed uh, the whole operation out which was pretty uh, uh, pretty great to do and I think a, a very good sort of fitting ending to the whole film so um, all together I think we all sort of completed the story Wow like a patchwork project and I love it just yeah yeah through the year the, the response has been incredible i mean we're, we're surprised that people who see it uh, they like it so it, it did it play in festivals or do you go straight to the big time like you did yeah we played in the uh the newport beach film festival first and then we played in uh doc utah in southern utah and then we played at the tiburon film festival which was sort of our homecoming uh where where we're from so um it was a nice little festival loop uh to get ready for this this big pbs um national rollout which we're excited about so when you were at the festival i've i've been a part of a film festival um on the on the man managing and producing the film festival part um how, what was what was the reaction like because I, I, I think of the artsy world getting a good dose of this new unknown world for them. What was the reaction like in, in that environment? The film festival reaction was, was great. Uh, we had people come in from all over um, and some people with personal ties to the Misty Men themselves and um, others who were just film fans and others that wound up at the festival. It was this really interesting uh, eclectic mix of viewers, but the, um, yeah, I mean, the, the theater, the reaction was pretty extraordinary. Um, we got to answer a lot of good questions and a lot of people sort of brought their own anecdotes to the table. And I think it just, it inspired a lot of great discussions and Q and A's and back and forths, which was uh, a, a good sign that the film is, is as meaningful as it is. I wanted just to add though, that a, a bit of reality in describing the people that came to see it, but actually the numbers that came to see it was very, very disappointing and low. Uh, Vietnam, war, it's not something that many people are interested in today. And so in oh, terms I, of actual well, there's return, not there's an audience for that, and uh, I may, I may have a. Uh, you may know someone. I may know someone that sitting mere feet from a a, a theater, uh, here in the middle of Hollywood. So I I, I want I, what uh, Super Producer Holly has jumped in and is asking me to ask you uh, to kind of describe the. Uh, without giving away the movie, kind of describe the movie and the experiment itself. Well, and what I would should do is describe the squadron and what we did and what we were doing. And it was a very, uh, a very specific top secret operation. Uh, th this was at the period, this started in about 67, 68, 69, during the Vietnam War when the war changed. This was no more a rebellion of small ragtag units down south. But this was the uh, time of very heavy, big military units from North Vietnam, 
starting to be involved in the war. And they were starting to move huge amounts of supplies from, uh, from Russia and from China, huge amounts. Big, uh, big military units were starting to move south. And so to uh, try to stop that movement, they set it up uh, forward air controllers, small little airplanes were shot out of the sky. And somebody had an idea, well, what, why, don't, why don't we try using uh, jets, fast moving jets as forward air controllers? And that's why it was called an experiment. We'll send these guys up to North Vietnam and uh, see if they can uh, identify and stop the flow of these massive amounts of uh, materials. And that was the MSD experiment. We would send up, uh, you know, there was about 15 guys at a time over a period of uh, three, three years. And they would fly up there for uh, maybe one, two, three hours. They'd hit a tanker a couple of times and identify uh, movements of troops, materiel, and then bring in fighters to try to stop them. Essentially, that was the mission. And uh, we essentially shut down much of the movement of this uh, heavy equipment, especially during the day. This was before smart bombs, GPS. This was all done with eyeballs and, uh, and uh, dumb bombs. You know? So we were trying to cut down the flow of materials moving through the southern part of Vietnam into Laos, into Vietnam. So that's pretty much what they did. It lasted for about a period of three years and then it was take, we lost, you know what, we didn't have any airplanes left. We were using two seat F-100s, you know, 30% of our guys got shot down. We soon, soon didn't have any airplanes. So the F-4 started to do it. Other people took over our job when we stopped. That's the story essentially. It's certainly the, the foundation for a great documentary. So Ian, what did you, what did you learn about your grandfather and, and, and uh, the experiment itself. Like, I um, imagine there's a generational difference in the, in both making of this and consuming of this. Certainly, I, I mean, I, I had heard from Dean, uh, you know, just while I was growing up as a kid, uh, a little bit about it through the years, you know, and I had different little pieces of information that I could piece together. But um, I think here it was really learning about the personal experience and getting a chance to get a much more intimate look at who these pilots were. Um, and even just, I mean, learning about them on a personal level, but also about the war in general, learning about just the geography of Vietnam and how different parts were moving and what the Misties were actually doing. Um, There's a lot of research on this that I knew parts of, but just learned a lot more about by going more in depth and hearing their stories and looking at the transcripts and, um, and just reading up on some of the literature that, um, that some of these Misties have put out. And uh, yeah. Wow. Ashley, what do you got? Um, I'm, I'm taking it all in. I'm trying to be, I'm, I'm, I'm absorbing, I'm absorbing. Right. Okay. Well, so, it, oh, go ahead. Oh no, by all means, Jeff. Oh no, I was just gonna say, you clearly have put out a good product. I, I haven't seen it yet. I hope there's at least a, a, a trailer that can entice me until I'm able to see it. Uh, I'll tell you, it's online. You can go just do a search on the mistyexperiment.com and you'll find it or go to PBS, search for the Misty Experiment. PBS has it online also. This is gonna be amazing. The super producer, Holly, I know she's, feverishly typing to get that information um, to the show notes. Now you, you made clearly a good product, an excellent product, um, but I have to ask, what's it like to work with family on creative things, especially when there's <laughs> creative differences? Come oh on. My God, it was a dream. It was just yeah. wonderful. I just, you know, I can't say how wonderful it was to work with my grandson, but you know, I worked with the Misties too. I mean, it was wonderful working with my guys. So the whole experience was, my, my sister, Ian's aunt is also a documentary for producer, film producer. So, so it's sort of in the family and she had a part in, in this thing too. It was wonderful. It was all very positive. It really was. 
the the point where we actually were able to bring so much of this together in the edit was during the pandemic you know so it was it was an interesting time to be making a film you know when you're unable to be on sets I, I remember there were times where we were talking about these interviews and are we going to send them cameras to film themselves and zoom and you know so it's it's it was an interesting time I think for the film industry in general anyway um, but being able to take this time when the world was a little bit on pause on hold and just be able to sit together and go through so much of this footage and um, old photos the archival um, one of my favorite things about the film is the archival that is in it and some of the photos that were just taken by the guys you know even just hanging out around Tuiwa or you know actual uh, uh, the airfare itself it's just it was uh, yeah it was a fun experience getting to sit down and really go through it all wow um, I'm, a, I'm a very like visual person and I, I love to like I love documentaries I enjoy certain genres of, of, of entertainment and movies and film. And it's just dawned on me that like, I've never done any of like the film festival circuits. And I'm, I feel like so far as I'm like trying to uh, like, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm like very visual. So I'm, I'm trying to visualize all of the different cut scenes and how you, again, like you were able to patchwork all of this. And nonetheless, during a pandemic, when the world was like, you said on a pause and I, and it's just it's been it's, it's successful right and people love it and i'm i'm really excited for both of you and what a unique opportunity to to collaborate like i'm just trying to think like the last thing i think i collaborated with my father with was like what size drill bit i need to use for the macgyver project i just did in my home and we we're like facetiming each other like that was our last collaboration yeah. <laughs> and i'm like I can't even imagine doing like a creative project like with him or like any of my family. So I'm really excited that you both were able to have this shared experience. And um, I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to, you know. It was also a collaboration between the Misties. You know, we had to go back to yeah. a lot of the Misties uh, to do some shoots. And uh, I, I don't know whether you know, but many of the Misties of, of the 157, we ended up with something like 10 general officers. Two of Misties became Air Force Chief of Staff. You know what Chief of Staff is, you know, Top Gun in the Air Force. Two of our guys ended up there. We ended up with a couple of astronauts, uh, congressionals. We got some congressionals out of MISTI uh, besides all the rest of the stuff that they got. So it was a super uh, great group. And going back to them, having working with them was uh, a really nice, great part of this again. I, f I find that incredibly interesting that um, such a high caliber of, of skills and, and values, right? And like you said, this is a really, really small group. So to see that there is this trajectory of amazingness, including yourself, Dean, right? Like you said, UNICEF, you were, you were there and the wall came down. Like there are all of these amazing people in this condensed space doing a very unique, unknown outcome of a, of a, you know, a job, of a task. You know, as a former service member, I know what it's like to try and herd cats and some of my soldiers, right? Like and, uh, imagining just the, the, the caliber of and they were all volunteers too and they they yeah. all volunteered all of them volunteered knowing you had a 30 percent chance of being shot down so yeah. this was super 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 special group that self-selected to yeah I just, you know, the service is the the component here and i think as as a legionnaire and as a service member and a veteran and exactly uh i think there is something to be said about each generation of service members and i know frequently that you know, we refer to World War II veterans as the greatest generation, but I have wholeheartedly believed that every generation that has served thereafter is the greatest of their own generation. Absolutely, good for you. And yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. I, I truly believe that. And I think, you know, when you see that pool of excellence and then you all rise together, everyone wins, right? So that's really, that's unique. And I'm super happy that you, been able to have that experience and unite and bring people together and, and share a story that otherwise people may not know about and like i said Jean, i'm, I'm the stoic i'm the stoic scholar here jump. you know and we're you know we're all 
we're vets. I mean, all those of us here, we know what, what's going on, but, but getting this story up like this to the general public and having them understand a little bit more about it was, was a really good part, a big part of this. Because every, like I said, I mean, people didn't, it's, it was hard to get eyeballs on this at the film festival if they didn't come in. But once they came in and they saw it, the impact was. Yeah. One thing about this too, and you were talking about smaller, a smaller group, focusing on a smaller group is, um, I, I feel like a lot of the material I see, um, whether it be it, be about the Vietnam War or other wars through history is a more sort of macro understanding of the war as a whole. Um, but this, I think, gives us a chance to really dive in deeper and take a more intimate look at a smaller group, you know? Um, like, for example, in, in the Ken Burns uh, Vietnam, it's all encompassing, it's fascinating, the entire thing. And the Misties have a small part in that. And I just think it's interesting to go into one of those small parts and really investigate who were those people, you know, who were each and every one of these people, um, because everyone has their own story and, and usually very, very powerful stories in this case. So um, I think that was a great opportunity to do that. Could not agree more. Um, well, well said, grandson. <laughs> Aww. Aww. I do okay. love the love. I, I, All the love. <laughs> Or rather, his brother, my other grandson, by the way, is working right now in uh, Africa on guinea worms. So he's also out in the bush and he's sort of like uh, South Sudan. South Sudan. Yeah. It is in your blood. Yeah, it's there's there is a theme here. There is a theme. Wow. Wow. So I do. I only have one. I have one issue to take up with Dean. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. I'm the 60 minutes guy. Oh no, I'm just I I I disagree with you that there's uh, a, about the the appeal to an audience here. Um, I I think a good story always has an audience, um, and I think the the Vietnam War, though it has been debated endlessly. Uh, there, there's, there's still a, there's still a story there, and there's, I mean, lots of stories there, and they're important to our history, and they're important to the veteran community. They're currently the backbone of the veteran community, and I, I, I personally think is, is if it. If the story of the story gets out there, that uh, a lot of people are going to see this, and uh, we're going to be a better nation for it, because we need to know the contributions that people make and the sacrifices that people endured and the future that they allowed to be. Those are those kind of themes. Uh, I. I I just I think people are gonna I think people are gonna go out and um, partake in this. You're, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I, I typically right. am. You can ask Ashley. Um. <laughs> he has his moments. Where he's right, and then I think I references like earlier at a, a different interview, but I was like, he's kind of like Icarus. He just flies a little too close to the sun too time. Sometimes gets a little burn, gets his feathers ruffled. Figures it out, takes a step back. Next thing you know, then, then they come like, down and watch a cool. Documentary. Then he's like just gliding across the ground. Then he's back up. It's uh, that so is the going Jeff to, Daly experience. Oh, it's so not about me. But I want to make sure that uh, the the people we the alphas and even passerbys can know where to find you, your work, this film. Ian's films, your previous film, uh, heck, your brother's film, your aunt's film. Uh, where is there just a family docu documentary makers.com website? Where can, where can people soak up all of this knowledge? If you go to uh, themistyexperiment.com, you'll find the story of this movie. And if you go to the uh, 
page that has my name and Ian's name, you'll find a link to the docu other mo movie that I made and the movies that Ian has made. So the mistyexperiment.com. I also uh, made a website for the, uh, for the uh, uh, squadron. It's called Misty Vietnam, Misty Vietnam, one word. Dot com. So those two websites will give you everything you need to know about uh, Misty and about the work that Ian and I did. Ian's Ian, you, you, you so that that that's where to go. And you you've given those to Super Producer Holly. Yes. Outstanding. Yeah, then uh, watch that traffic. Get ready to go. Like it's going to go up. I mean, it's not going to be PBS, but. Is going to go up, and it's a it's a targeted audience. So you can also search on PBS. Go to uh, the Misty Experiment on PBS. It'll take you right there too. PBS has now got the movie up on on their website. This is outstanding news. Yeah. I feel like yeah. Ian's I, always I, waiting I, to I jump heard. in, and somebody steps on him. Go, go ahead, Ian. Just say uh, yeah. All the uh, Misty Experiment dot com is the best uh, to find for the film and then for myself um, it's just imdb or uh, my personal website is ianmadelson.com um, or floor1prod.com is my production company outstanding well i want to thank both of you uh, for being here first of all for telling these stories that need to be told and of course thank you for your service and welcome home dean and uh, and Ashley, you want to say salutations? Well, you're so good, Jeff. I'd hate to interrupt. Um, <laughs> but no, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Ian and Dean uh, for, for speaking with us and, and sharing this remarkable work that you're doing. And I want to wish you both like, continued success in, in all of your creative endeavors. Um, but we're really excited to, to have you on, and I'm looking forward to uh, viewing it myself. It's going to be so a big Go ahead. And then finally, I just want to take a moment to thank uh, Maryland Public Television for being our sponsor station and um, also American Public Television for taking this on and helping with uh, uh, distribution. And uh, together, it's been this team that we've been fortunate enough to work very well with. And we're excited for Memorial Day and to roll this out and have a lot of people see the film. All right, Alphas, we're counting on you. This needs to be the most viewed uh, piece on public broadcast. Uh, go to PBS, click it up, watch it, review it, talk about it, share it, do what it is you got to do. We got to make sure this story gets out there. These filmmakers, I mean, making documentaries can be lonely work and making documentaries succeed can be excruciating work so let's give them uh let's give them a hand and get that done and you know what we do alphas right when right after this break they're not going to be here and we're just going to talk about them we don't know what they're going to we don't know what we're going to say yet they're going to have to they're going to have to watch or listen to this to find out but i'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing we're going to talk there's nothing bad we could say about them so alphas come back after this break American values and patriotism. The American Legion advocates for upholding and defending the United States Constitution, equal justice and opportunity for everyone, and discrimination against no one. Youth education, responsible citizenship, and honoring military service by observing and participating in patriotic and memorial events. We are veterans strengthening America. We are the American Legion. And we are back. That was quite the interview. Do you have any takeaways, Ashley? So I think my main takeaway is I'm always super impressed with creatives. And this family is just full of creatives. <laughs> They're just all, I feel like they just get together at like Thanksgiving table. And they, instead of like swapping, like, you know, like being swapping things, they're just like swapping ideas. And they're just like, all right, put it on the vision board, everybody. Let's get it done. Like, I just have this very interesting concept of them. <laughs> just making stuff happen for each other. And uh, it was really neat to hear from, from Ian and um, his, his grandfather and the 
ability to work on a, a multi-generational kind of product project with a family member, I think is a rare and special um, occasion. Right. My biggest takeaway is I think Dean is going to be super surprised at how uh, his work is accepted. Uh, he mentioned that he, he didn't think an, an old Vietnam story would would sell, but I can tell you, I will be I will be right there looking for it. And I, I, I think there's a new found uh, admiration as we learn more about mm -hmm. uh, what went on in the Vietnam War and the way that they were treated. Uh, and I, I, think, I think that he's gonna have a, a much warmer and broader reception than he's anticipating. Right. And, and I think it's gonna be a big giant welcome home that he's not expecting. Okay, we are moving on to what some call their favorite part of the show. Pew, 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 rapid fire. All right, Ashley, we're getting ready to get in this. All right, are you ready? Yeah, I guess so. Because I know you got thoughts and now you got feelings, and this is where they come out. Rapid fire for you alphas out there can be therapeutic, so please tune in. All <laughs> right, rapid fire number one, a fitting tribute to trailblazers and visionaries. This was found at a website we like to call AmericanLegion.org. Please visit frequently and uh, consume all of the all of the all of the goodness. There's all of, of the things. Would you argue nope. the goodness? Okay. The story is more than 100 women veterans from World War II through the Vietnam War comprised the first all women's honor flight from Florida and just the second all women's honor flight overall the women toured the newly reopened women's uh, military women's memorial after it underwent six months of renovations at the gates of the arlington national cemetery on june 1st the memorial honors the service of the three million women who have served the nation beginning with the american revolution it serves as the only historical repository documenting the service of military women and features an education center interactive exhibitions, a collection of women's military women's stories and artifacts, and host programs and events for all generations. The first all women's honor flight took place last fall. Terry Campbell, one of the veterans on the trip, and our favorite, Carol Lindemood Harlow, Chief Development and Communications Officer for Honor Flight, appeared on a recent episode of the Tango Alpha Lima podcast of the American Legion. All right. Besides our love for Carol, what do you got on this? Um, well, I highly encourage anyone who has never visited the Military Women's Memorial to check it out. It is right at the gates of Arlington. So right before security sweeps you to go into the parking garage and walk through the visitor center, um, it's immediately to the right before like you get like right just past as you get on the trams on your left. It's, I'm, you can't miss it. But the thing is, it's legitimately the hemicircle like monument that you drive up and you see when you're trying to enter Arlington. Um, and a lot of people walk right by it, believe it or not. Um, it's, it's a unique place. It's beautiful. It's a place of reflection. And quite frankly, it's a great spot to overlook both the Lincoln Memorial on the top terrace and also the back terrace where you can see um, just a, a very unique high ground, uh, a high ground uh, perspective of uh, the, the, uh, the cemetery is beautiful. Um, so I highly recommend, uh, it's a, they got a great team over there. I'm uh, happy to hear, you know, Carol and her team are, are cranking away and getting these remarkable veterans uh, recognition and showing them to the memorials they may not have already realized existed for them. Cause that what, I think the memorials were like 25 years old now, 25, 26, something like that. So it's an, a big anniversary and a lot of people don't know it's there. So I highly encourage people to check it out on their website and whatnot. Well, I would say I would I would want to get back to the uh, the honor flight itself. Uh, it's awesome that these honor flights get done in every capacity, uh, and having the all women's the the couple of all women's ones. Well, and I I feel like that those were monumental. I also feel like the women served right alongside men, and I hope that more women will be comfortable going on the 
the the general honor flights as well. Um, and and of course we love Carol and anything she does is worth paying attention to. All right, are we ready? Not one pew, but pew pew two pews. Well, all right, we have rapid fire number two. The Marine Corps, the United States Marine Corps, Pride Month post misses the mark according to Military Times. If you have, I have to preface this. If you're, uh, if you haven't seen the image, maybe we can put it up on the screen. I don't know. Maybe Super Producer Holly will make that decision in post. That's industry term for during editing. So we have this picture here. It's it's very reminiscent of um, of uh, wow. What, why am I losing this? Um, full Metal Jacket. It's the helmet with a band around it. It says, proud to serve on the side. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six rounds of ammunition with the tips in different colors of the rainbow representing pride. There's the setup. This is the story. Each year, companies and allies alike take to social media on June 1 to express support for the LGBTQIA plus persons with rainbow displays for Pride Month. This year, the United States Marine Corps joined them with a post of a helmet sporting a row of multicolored 5.56 millimeter NATO rounds and a message for queer troops. During the month of June, the Marine Corps takes pride in recognizing and honoring the contributions of our LGBTQ service members. The post reads, we remain committed to fostering an environment free from discrimination and defend the values of treating all equally with dignity and respect. The United States Marine Corps, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think, Ashley? So I was reading the comments on these and, you know, I know it was, it was done with, with well, and, and it was done with, you know, well intent. Um, but like, yeah, I, I don't even want to read some of the responses, but some of them are kind of funny, but some of them are also like, what? And some of them are just intolerable. Um, but you know, the scores of commenters noted that the helmet looked a lot like it was holstering a row of crayons. And I won't lie, I had to do a double take because that's honestly kind of what I first thought it was. <laughs> um, just all intents and purposes of putting it out there because I quickly, I had to like, look at it. So if you saw me earlier in the video, it's like moving my head to the side. I was like, oh, that's that. Um. But, you know, of course, that's the famous stereotype snack for the Marines and who are often classified as crayon eaters and perceived lack of intelligence. So, oh, not great, but it it could be better. I mean, it's, you know, they try to put it out there. That's great. Um, but, you know, you just not going to make everybody happy. And uh, I think nice. some of the other things that came to mind or it kind of looks like the promotion materials for Stanley and Kubrick's full metal jacket. A little bit to me like the image on the poster is like the same helmet with the ammo design so um yeah i yeah some of the comments are very interesting what, what is the the comments that you didn't want to read i will uh i will mention them briefly uh the marine corps i remember being when i was in the marine corps we said there were no black marines white marines everybody's shades of green right dark green marine like green marine and all of that so this attitude that it's saying is no colors no preferences no special treatment or celebration of any subgroup or category just marines leave it out keep social experiments trendy buzzwords and politics out of it now that's kind of where that attitude comes from person's a little harsh i'm not going to give out his twitter name uh because we don't want to get someone twitter bullied but I think what happens is a, a lot of a lot of people uh, resist evolution, and sometimes there is there is a there is a nuanced change to the same thing. Now, all Marines are green. Love it, live it. Can't imagine a Marine Corps without it. At the same time, uh, acknowledging that that green involves green includes everyone takes steps. You have to get to the point where all green is green, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I can see, I honestly, and I hate, I hate this phrase, I can see both sides of this issue. So uh, I do hate that phrase because it's a cop out and makes you want to get invited to everyone's dinner party. So we're, we're going to leave rapid fire now. We're going to go to 
we have an announcement. We have a big announcement, Ashley. Yes, we do. Yeah, from uh, how big? How big, Jeff? It's big? it's gargantuan. It's so big. I have to transition myself into a new tone of voice, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next week, Monday through Thursday, I'm going to need you to buckle down. I know you're. You can only take us one day a week. We give you so much goodness that going through it Monday through Thursday is going to be a lot, but I know you can handle it, especially those of you who are still in or recently got out of the service. We're having a series on transitioning from the wonderful world of being in the military to the wonderful world of being in civilian society. We have some great guests. This is in... Uh, I don't know if you know this, this is, it coincides with the anniversary of the GI Bill. So, because that is a huge uh, transition piece for a lot of veterans to be able to get into college and help pay for it and, and move on in life. So we love this series. We've been recording it. We've been working hard. Uh, Ashley cleaned her glasses for all of these episodes and she just, She's just sharp and on point. You do not want to miss this. Uh, I am pretty Ashley, good what at you, transition. Like transition that? topics are kind of my bread and butter. So bread and say. bread and butter. So bread and butter. Bread and yeah. butter. If you're watching your calories, stay away from the bread and butter on these episodes, but tune in for the <laughs> tune in for the meat, the meat goodness of the topics because it can be helpful. All right. You have any shout outs or anything like that? No, I don't. Not today. Today is a shout out free day. I'm not even going to shout anybody out. What? Wow. What? I do want, you know what? I put the challenge out uh, a few episodes ago for people to write in Legion, my, or what is it? Legion Town, legiontown.org. And I shout out people who, who submit articles to that. So I'm going to need y'all to step it up, alphas. But right now, Ashley. Yeah. All they right. Have home, well, they have homework they have, to do. Can you take us out of here? Homework you won't be doing. So, all right. <laughs> uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Tango Alpha Lima podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you consume your podcasts. Please leave us a review and give us a big old five star rating so that the world knows how much you love us. Preferably me, maybe Jeff, whatever. Love us. Uh, if you if you do have a guest recommendation, please go to legion.org backslash Tango Alpha Lima and click on the suggest a guest link. And we look forward to hearing from you and uh, getting you on the show. Wow. More Marines, please, on that guest list. I'm just putting it, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just put, just put, I don't have a bias or anything. All right, Alphas, we love you. We need you. We respect you and we admire you. And your word means everything. So please spread that word about the Tango Alpha Lima experience and get all of your brilliant people to tune in and all of your less than brilliant people they need to tune in and please next week enjoy the transition series and then the week after that we'll go back to our regularly scheduled experience thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you next time but with that i'm going to declare season three episode 109er mission complete as an extra Thank you.